Amen. How's everyone doing this morning? A couple of you are doing good. A couple of you are still aren't awake yet. It's so great to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. It's been 10 weeks. I was corrected this morning in Sunday school that I said six weeks. Um, I was never good at math. But um, it's been 10 weeks since we've been here, since I preached. Th- March 15th was the last time I preached a message in the series that we're about to uh, review. Um, we've been looking at a New Beginning series. We started off that off in January. But before we get into some review there, I just wanted to, I wanted to say some thank you to some folks. Um, uh, Terry, of course, has done a great job with uh, the sound, and he would come in bright and early in the morning, and when we were having services out in the, in the parking lot, set up the uh, speakers and set up the sound equipment and he also <clears throat> volunteered to have a, to help allow us to use his um, short wave transmitter. That's not right, Terry, is it? FM, FM transmitter. There you go. FM transmitter. I, he corrected me before on that. It's a short, it's, I don't want to say short wave because that's wrong. Say short wave is wrong. Say it. Yes, you don't say short wave. It's a transmitter for FM transmitter, but we're able to we're able to hear it in the parking lot, and some, even some of the neighbors could hear it as well. Uh, you turn you tune your radios to 107.3. We just pick a radio station randomly that's not being used, and uh, you can. That's how we broadcasted the messages in the car radios. Uh, so we did a two-fold. We did the speakers outside. We did a car radio. And actually, we're still tuning that radio station as we speak. So those who are listening at home, if they're, look, if they're nearby, they're listening at home. So uh, that's still an option there as well. But I also want to just say, say thank you to Terry for all the work he's done and continue, continue to do. He does edit the video. This COVID-19 really has forced us into the new world technology-wise. Um, <clears throat> We never used radio, we never used YouTube or put our messages up on, on, uh, visibly onto Facebook. So we started recording the, the messages live um, through video, which I don't like seeing myself preach. Who, whoever, who likes seeing themselves you know, speaking? And, no, no one, no one likes that. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know how you guys sit there and listen to me, but uh, you do, so I thank you for that. Um, but uh, I couldn't even listen to the first couple. I was like, oh man. Turn him off, you know. You guys need to get awake this morning. <laughs> so we started videotaping the services in here. We had two, two services in here. Right when COVID-19 hit, we decided we were just going to cancel all services except for whoever liked to come out uh, to the main service at 1030. So we decided to videotape and then he records. He's always been recording my messages and um, <clears throat> He's putting the recording, the audio, and the video together, and it's been a, it's been a great, uh, uh, great time there. So I appreciate Terry for editing, editing that, and I also want to thank Helen for assisting, uh, setting up some equipment when she felt like getting out of bed in the morning. You know how she felt like, you know. Um, but also I want to thank Tyler, speci- specifically Tyler's been a great help here for the church. Um, he's been doing a lot of uh, uh, leg work around the church, a lot of... Uh, Whatever I asked him to do as a gopher, I appreciate that, his willingness to serve. He's um, done some help in the office, moving some, some stuff over, some books and stuff, and uh, uh, tearing, tearing, taking down that uh, trim. Him and Kaylee took down a lot of that trim together that was in there. It was like some baby Noah's Ark print trim. I didn't really want to keep that up. We also took down the bozo, the clown, uh, light um, cover thank you uh off that so it's nice just a nice white light light cover so now uh, so that's one of my biggest things i like in there now is that white like some of you are getting it come on uh it's been a great uh working with tyler as far as with the, everything there he's been d- taking down the the coat rack in the in the um the coat room there and he's, we're going to move the uh, the uh library over i just wanted to thank him and kaylee for that I uh, also want to thank Micah. He's helped out a lot with some uh, physical labor and stuff. And then I want to thank Glenda for making some calls. She's been my go-to to make some phone calls to get the, some word out and, and uh, encouragement out that way. But we've been, out, we've been doing some Friday devotionals. And this is on the, as Keith mentioned, on, we have a YouTube channel now. So it's really forced us to do some 
things technology wise, which has been a good thing, good 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 move for the church. So YouTube channel, if you just go to Manamore's Bible Church, um, you usually you'll find a, a YouTube channel, you find a Facebook page, and all those videos are up on there. I do a Friday devotional, so I do have some from some Friday hours from 9 a.m. to noon. I'll be in, the, in my office every Friday morning, unless I have something going on, um, like an appointment or something like that. If you'd like to talk with me. I just call me and let me know that you're going to be coming in. And if those hours don't work, I'll try to maneuver and try to get, get, make, make availability in the office so we can talk. I um, just wanted to bring that to your attention as well. Also wanted to say, thank, thank Sarah for painting the office. She did the entire painting in the office. Uh, two coats, been, did a great job in that. So uh, I just wanted to thank her for that as well. If I miss anybody, I'm sorry. Um, but I just wanted to give some thanks to that as well. I also wanted to thank as she's sitting here reminding me, Rhonda for doing the bulletin. She's done the bulletins for the past uh, couple months, uh, even before all this. So um, if there's errors in the bulletin, it's my fault. You thought I was gonna say it was Rhonda's fault, didn't you? Uh-huh. It's my fault because she gives me the bulletin to review. And if I don't make changes, I say it's good to go. It's my fault. So I'll take all the blame. That's no problem there. So I just wanted to share those thoughts with you. It's been a great time of reflection, a great time of uh, um, trying to encourage those folks that are coming out and trying to encourage those that are sitting at home. That's why we're trying to do that like Friday devotional, trying to do like a devotional and send that out and also the, the message. We're still videotaping the messages and putting them on the website as well. We have a website page, manmorsbiblechurch.org. Uh, So look that all up if you're tech savvy. Um, I thought this was a great way to uh, get the word out there uh, to those folks that are sitting home. I know a lot of churches have gone to uh, online services and we sort of done that. We haven't gone live for that. Uh, Although the Friday devotionals are sort of live, you might hear me stutter and stam a little bit or, or think about some things, look out the window. Uh, in my office, but uh, it's just more of a relaxed atmosphere, just a, a thoughts for the week. Uh, usually they're based off of some devotionals I've done in the, in the week myself. So uh, just, be in, just be in prayer for us as we continue throughout the, this path. Also, just uh, if there's any questions you have, feel free to get a hold of me. All right, I wanted to just review over the past, over the past several months before this uh, COVID-19 hit, uh, and, the, and, the, and the stay-at-home advisories that were placed on us. Um, we were looking at a series called New Beginnings. And we looked, we did five, I did five messages. There are seven messages in this series. I did five of them up till March 15th was the last message I preached here on this subject. And I don't know if you remember it or not, but I was sitting here and Tyler was sitting here and we did a back and forth sort of banter, back and forth, Um, presentation on the gospel and we'll look at that a little bit today as well we're not going to do that same thing we're going to look at that that uh, that step-by-step presentation of the gospel but let's so let's get right into um, the review a new beginning with God was the first sermon I preached back in January right after uh, January 1st we looked at a verse in Romans chapter 21 not Romans I'm sorry Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 where it says, then, who sat, then he who sat on the throne be said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Christ here is giving this, uh, this um, instruction to John while he's being in prison on the island of Patmos. And he says, I want you to write these things. And, and listen to this. He says, I make all things, what? New. This, <laughs> going into January 2020, I never would have guessed that there'll be some new challenges coming to our way. Now, if you would have told me back in January that we'd been quarantined in our homes for 10 weeks, I'd call you crazy. In the United States of America, that would never happen. But it did. And it still is. So this new beginnings I was referring to back then, I had no clue what it meant. I don't know. I didn't know why the Lord asked me to to preach this series. I mean, it was like consuming. I wanted to preach some other series, to be honest with you. And I had them all lined up, ready to go. 
But this was like consuming, so I want you to preach this first. Well, but I, but I was wanting to do this, Lord. No, I want you to preach this service, this sermon's first. We looked at a new beginning with God. Let's go right through this. A new year is like a new baby, I mentioned before. Many changes will be necessary, some of which may, may be neglected. And that's supposed to be a little funny. Some changes are necessary in a baby's life, but a new year is like that sometimes. Getting right into the message, we looked at uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, and we looked at the first point was God's nature dictates a new beginning. God's love, God loves new beginnings, and you see this over and over again through Scripture. Over and over again, we read about where God gave people, many times undeserving people, a fresh start, a new beginning, another chance to go back and do things right. I love the fact when you think about what salvation is, it's a rebirth. We are born again. We are regenerated. We get to do things correctly this time. It doesn't matter if you got saved when you're 7 years old, like I did, or when you're 47 or 57 or 77. It doesn't matter. You were once a sinner, and now you're saved. Simple as that. You were once lost, and now you're found. There's a change that happens. It's a new beginning. Next point was, man's need demands a new beginning. We may not like to admit it, but we all know it. We are fallen, faulty, infallible creatures. That's why one of the favorite sayings of little children, even some older children, when they're playing a game is do-over. I remember growing up on the on Manada, Manada Street in Harrisburg. Some of you might know where that is. Manada Street is off of Paxton Street. And I remember there was a street, our street was so narrow that there's cars parked on one side, cars parked on the other side. Right now it's a one-way street, but at that time it wasn't. And it was so narrow that I don't think it was even more narrow, bigger than this right here. One car could go right down that middle of that street. And guess where all the kids played in that street? Right there in that street. Right there in the middle. And we, we played a, a cheap, a, um, wiffle ball. And we had hit the ball. And the car would come down. We said, do over. Whatever happened just then didn't count. Who's ever played a game that had a do over? Raise your hand. Some of you got to get a life. You got to go out and play some wiffle ball. So tonight we're going to play some... No, I'm just teasing. It's a do-over. That means whatever just happened, whatever, if, if I hit the ball or if I struck out or if I hit the ball into some guy's mitt or if I hit a home run, it was null and void. It doesn't matter what happened two minutes ago or two seconds ago. It's a do-over. We're going to do it again. Why is the do-over so important? Because we mess up. We do. Every time you go to the Lord Jesus Christ on your knees and you say, Father, forgive me. It's a do-over. Because we mess up. We blow it. We stumble. We fall. We get away from God. We sin. The Bible makes us this abundantly clear over and over again. Isaiah 53 says this. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Romans 3, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6 even says that apart from Christ, we are slaves to sin. And so as a result of all all, of all that, we need a new beginning, a fresh start. And God, in his grace and mercy, willingly gives it to us. That was a new beginning with God. Next message we looked at was a new beginning with your Bible. We looked at some introduction there. We also looked at a statement where it says, You will never grow by, you will never be a growing Christian without a knowledge of the Word of God. If you think that you're just going to let your Bible sit on the nightstand, or you let your Bible sit on the bookcase, or let your Bible sit on the coffee table, and you're going to continue to grow in, the, in your relationship with the Lord, you're wrong. The only way to grow in your relationship with anything is to be in communication with that thing. 
with that person. So if we're if we're sitting or if we have our Bible sitting collecting dust, we're not growing. Period. You can say amen. George Barna tells us this. This particular uh, statistic was recently, I think it was in 2018. George Barna says, tells us that 39% of evangelical Christians read their Bibles when they weren't in church. You say, that's pretty good, Pastor. Now let me know. 39%. That means almost 60%, over 60% don't read their Bible when they're not in church. Now, in case you didn't realize, that's not good. That means there's less than half of you guys sitting right here in this church. 60% of you don't read your Bible other than it's right here in church. And only one, now listen to this one. And only one out of 10 Americans read their Bibles on a daily basis. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, eight, twenty-nine, thirty-one, thirty-two people in this church, in this room right now. Thirty-two people. That means three of us read our Bible on a daily basis. Now, doesn't that put it in a little bit different perspective? And we wonder why the depression rate is so high. Why we wonder why the suicide rate is so high. We wonder why fear is so high. And and the hopelessness that we've had over the past 10 weeks is so high. Turn over to Psalm 119, if you would. We looked at this chapter during this particular message. Psalm 119 is a very familiar passage of Scripture talking about the very Word of God. There's 150 psalms in the book of Psalms. In Psalm 119, if you actually took your Bible and split it into half, Psalm 119 is pretty much directly right in the middle of the Bible. Think that's coincidence? I think not. Verses 1 through 11, I'd just like to read a couple verses as we go through this, and we'll continue through the review of this chapter, of this message. Psalm 119. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with a brightness of heart when I learn your righteousness, ju- righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. But let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. You can see David's heart here as he writes this psalm. Verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. Verse 18, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Verse 24, your testimonies are also my delight and my counselors. Let me stop right there. Your testimonies are also my delight and my counselors. Do you go to the Word of God when you're feeling down? Do you go to the Word of God when you need counsel? Or do you go to Dr. Phil? Or to Oprah? Or to some other man who has on the label counselor, psychologist, psychiatrist, It says here in the very word of God, the center of the Bible, it says that your testimonies, this is talking about the the word of God, are, are also my delight. 
and my counselor. Folks, I'm going to give you an honest truth. There's nothing in this world that we come in contact with or we go through that's not written in the Word of God. That the Word of God does not talk about in some form or another. Verse 26 through 28 says, I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Do you go to do the word of God for strength? For comfort. Verse 48. My hands also I will lift up to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Now, when was the last time you heard someone says, I love commandments? But David here says, I love your commandments, the Lord. I love your statutes. I love your law. Why? Why does he say this? Think about this. It's, it's been a proven fact. It's been a proven fact that kids do better. Children, young adults do better with guidelines, with rules, with statutes, with laws in place. Why? Because they understand that there's guidelines that if I cross this, this, I'm going to get punished. They want, the kids want to know what their guidelines are. Amen? If you've ever had any, if you've ever raised kids, you've ever had any type of interaction with kids, you say, well, that kid's a brat. No, he just doesn't understand the guidelines yet. Now, if he understands the guidelines and he still does contrary to that, yeah, then maybe he might just be a brat. He's rebellious. And there's different uh, things we can do about that. But kids in general want to know the guidelines. We as adults sort of want to know the guidelines. When we go to get a new job, we want to say, well, what's the guidelines? What's the law? What's, the, what's my responsibility in this job? We want to know what our guidelines are. David said the guidelines... Your commandments are my delight. I love your commandments. I love your guidelines. And we, as Christians in 2020, ought to love God's guidelines. Ought to love his commandments. It keeps us on the straight and narrow. Verse 72. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. But now he's getting into money. Your law... He says, the law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. What's that tell you? That means it's precious to him. It's invaluable. The law of God's mouth to David is invaluable. You can't put a price on it. Verse 89. Forever, O Lord, he says, your word is settled in heaven. I was taught by Pastor Brooke Solberg at Davis Community Church when I was this big. I remember like it was yesterday. He used to say, he used to go, listen, listen to me. Look here, look here, listen to me. He used to do that. And what, what do you do? You're sitting there and you look up at him. Why? Because he told you to look at him. And he says, there's only two things that are going to last forever. The Word of God and souls of men. Where's your priorities at? There's only two things that are going to last forever. The Word of God that we're talking about here in Psalm 119 and the souls of men. We're going to talk about that next time. Because I'm not going to get through this review. Verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Right there, it tells you the eternity of the word. The eternal value that is placed on the very word of God. Verse 97. Oh, how I love your wet law it is my meditation all the day. Here again, we see David saying, oh, how I love your law it is my meditation all the day. Now, let's 
Something I was taught in Bible college, I'm going to teach you a little bit as well. <clears throat> if, if, if what the verse says is true, okay, then the reverse of that verse is also true. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, he says here that the law... Now listen here, bear with me here. 97. Oh, how I love your law is is my meditation all the day. Now the reverse is also true. Because he loves the law, because he meditates it all the day, he loves the law. Do you catch me there? It's because he meditates on it that he loves the law so much. It's not because he loves the law so much that he meditates on it, even though that's true, but that's not the main reason. It's because he meditates on it that he loves the law so much. Now you might just went Poof, in your mind. It's because if we meditate, I've, I've challenged you with this before. Back when I preached this message, I challenged you, give me 60 days, you give me 30 days, you give me just a little bit of time, and you constantly, every day, be in the Word of God, and you will love it. Because you meditate on it, that's why you love it. Because I talk to my wife daily, and I'm with her daily, I love her more. Duh. Because I read something over and over and over again, and I like this particular author, I keep reading this book over these books that she writes or he writes, it's because I love her more because I keep reading the books. Boy, I miss this. It's because we meditate on the David meditate on the reason why he meditated on it is because he loved the Lord. He loved his law. But the reason why he loved the law so much. Is because he meditated on it every day. He couldn't get enough of it. And, the, and God promises you this. Because this is living. Because this is living. If you read it. It, co- it grows inside of you. And it becomes flourishing. It's alive. And because it's alive. You're going to desire it more. Amen? Psalm 103, verse 103. Oh, sweet. How sweet are your words to my mouth? Okay, let me, let me rewind. How sweet are your words to my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through, though your precepts, through your precepts I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He says, how sweet are your words to my, my taste? Sweeter than honey to my mouth. Another, another section, he says, it's sweeter than honeycomb. Now, who's ever tasted right off the comb, right, took a piece of honeycomb and put it in your mouth? Who's ever done that? Raise your hand. Can you get any sweeter than that? You can say amen or No. Yes? Amen. You can't get any sweet. I mean, honey out of a jar ain't the same thing. Amen? So it's sweeter than honeycomb. What is? The Word of God. Through your precepts, he says, I get understanding. Through the Word of God, I get understanding. If I don't understand something... That I must dig into the word of God deeper. So the Lord can help me understand what I don't understand. If I want to get less dumb. Which is smarter. Come on, wake up. If I want to get less dumb, I get into the word of God. If I want to get smarter, I get in the word of God. Because it gives me what? Understanding according to Psalm 119, 104. And because he says, the precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. It illuminates my path. If you ever w- try to walk down a path in the woods in dark, you're going to be praying for a light. And we as Christians walk down this, this path called life 
sometimes in darkness. And we're just praying for a light. And folks, he's given us a light. Amen? He's given us a light. It's, it's called the Word of God. Next point. You've got to get into your Bible. That's what the psalmist means when he asks God to teach him his precepts. That's what he meant when he talked about learning the Lord's laws. That's what he was talking about when he mentioned the Lord's ways. Listen, the only way that you'll ever know the Lord's ways is by getting into his word. That's what he's talking about here. He's talking about getting into the word, studying, reading the word of God. So here's the first thing you have to determine. Why? Why is this so important? Well, just disregard everything I just mentioned in Psalms. It's important. Why? Why do you want to study the Bible? Is it just to know more about the Word of God, or is it to know more about the God of the Word? You see, we study the Word of God to know more about Christ, to know more about the God of the Bible, to know more about how the Holy Spirit operates, that's why we study the Word of God. Now, it's not, now I know in some ways those go, go together, but really you ought, to not to de- you ought not to decide to read and study your Bible just for information. One of the biggest things, the first one, the first things that <clears throat> when I went to Bible college, before even classes even started, they said all the new students in this in the um, sanctuary in the chapel and Dr. Anderson st- stood up and, and talked. He's the president of the, of the college. And I remember it very clearly. He said, one of the biggest challenges you're going to face here at Bible College is not utilizing this as a textbook. I thought, what's he mean by that? He said, let me repeat myself. I'm, thinking, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're going to repeat yourself because I need to hear that again. The biggest challenge you're going to face is not utilizing this as a textbook only. I said, hmm. That makes sense. Because in Bible college, you study this so much, it's like take take, take your textbook out and turn to chapter 3. Because folks, this is much more than just a textbook. This is much more than just information on a page. As I mentioned earlier, this is the very Word of God alive. God breathed. Pastor friend of mine says, I like it. He says, when you read the Bible, you're reading the mind of God. I like that. You're reading the mind of God. Don't you tell him I said that. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the, what? Renewing of your mind. When you read the Bible, you're renewing your mind. You're changing it. You're you're regenerating your mind. How else do you go from old man to new man? Other than regeneration, being reborn. And we do that by, by accepting Christ. And he does that continually through the word of God. So we ought to read and study a Bible for transformation. So how are you going to do that? By getting the truth of God's word into your mind. Howard Hendricks, great theologian, gives three reasons why you and I must study the Bible. First, he says, the Bible study is essential to growth. As newborn babies desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. 1 Peter 2.2. 2. Just like a baby, when they're first born, just desires that milk. I mean, if you've ever had a little baby and they're hungry, they're loud. And some of them can be very, very outspoken. I had had and still have three strong-willed children. And they've just, you know, grown from strong-willed children to strong-willed adults. 
and each of them when Jacob was hungry he was hungry and he let you know it. same with Kaylee same with Micah Kaylee used to suck in my nose right here Miranda would get her you know get the balls ready and she's I'm, I'm coming Kaylee and I stick her up and I you know went to love her up a little bit and she you know reach over and snaps right into my nose start sucking I'm like you know trying to pull her away because I want I th- I'm thinking she's gonna give me a hickey right here you know I walk around with this red thing in my nose what happened to you my wife punched me I ain't gonna say my daughter gave me a hickey I'm not gonna say that but when she, what's the point here? When she was hungry, she was hungry. The, they desired the milk, of milk, and should, so should we, as small children, as babes in Christ, we should desire the milk of the word. And as we grow older, we should desire the meat of the word. It's my job as a pastor to give you both. And it's your job as a Christian to search and get the meat and the milk as well. Next, so first of all, Bible study is essential to growth. Second, it's essential to spiritual maturity. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 5, if you would. We're going to close with this, this lesson here. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, starting at verse 11, says, Of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. Let's talk about the priesthood and the order of Melchizedek. For, through, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, mature. That is, those who by reason of use or practice have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now there's a lot said in this verse. He's talking about the priesthood and how we, as, we are all believers. We are all believer priests. When we accept Christ as our Savior, we become a priest. That means we can give sacrifices. What sacrifices can we give? Well, the first and foremost sacrifice we can give is ourselves. And the other sacrifices we can give is whatever is, is comes before the Lord in our life. Whatever comes above Him, we sacrifice that. The Bible says if your arm makes you sin, cut it off. If your foot makes you sin, cut it off. We don't need them if it makes you sin. Whatever sacrifices that we have, we lay out to the foundation, lay out on the altar. We are priests. Other things priests can do, we're not going to get into that this morning. But he's talking about the priests. He's talking about that they become dull of hearing. These Pharisees that he's talking about here become dull of hearing. He says, you ought to be teachers of the word, but yet you desire milk. You should be teachers of the law and you should be teachers of, of, of teaching meat of, of the word, but you're, 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 you need milk of yourself. You cannot even take solid food, he says. For who, everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled, it says here in, in Hebrews. In the word of righteousness, for he is a what? Babe. But solid food, verse 14, belongs to those who are mature. Mature, you mean like 60 years old, 70 years old? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about mature in, his relation, in their relationship with the Lord. You could be saved for 40 years and not know who Adam is. You could be saved for 40 years and not know the principles and the oracles of God. Or you can be saved for three years and know a lot more. You're mature. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't even matter how long you've been a Christian. This maturity is based on the work you put in. Period. How much time have you or I spent in the Word of God? That is your, your maturity. 
How can we discern something we don't understand? The solid food belongs to those who are of full age or maturity. That is those who by reason of use or practice have their senses exercised. Did you catch that? Because they've exercised, because they've practiced what this very word of God teaches, they're mature. That's what he's saying. Because they've spent the time and studied the word of God, because they spent the time in the word of God and they're, and they're, and they're desiring that, that milk and that meat, they're mature. That means, folks, let's fast forward to 2020, you cannot spend... Time sitting here in preaching, here in preaching and studying the Word of God here in the church, and go home and put your Bible in the stand and not grow. You're still going to need milk. And because I have to feed milk and meat, I understand there's some out there here and other places. I'm not the only pastor that have pastor that struggles with this that that need milk. Now, if, you have a, if you're a brand new Christian and you've only been met, uh, saved recently, then yeah, you, you need some milk. That's what one-on-one discipleship is so good about. That's what Sunday school is so good for. But when it comes to down, just good old wholesome preaching, I should be able just to preach meat the whole time. But I can't. Because folks aren't doing the homework at home. You follow me there? Number three, third reason why you must study the Bible from Howard Hendricks. It's it's essential to spiritual effectiveness. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture, not some, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's what it says. Does it end there? doesn't end there. Why? What's, all, what's the purpose of this? That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The word of God, all scripture, is given by God as inspiration by God. It's the very mind of God given to us on paper. For what reason? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And if you have all of that, you're complete. The whole purpose of us living is twofold. To grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and to win souls for him. Now hear my heart. If we're not doing either of those things, why are we still here? So therefore, if you're still living today, if you still got up in the morning, you have breath in your lungs, the Lord says, I want you to do those things. You hear me? When I say, when I say do you hear me, I mean, do you, do you like understand what I'm saying? I know you hear me. I'm not saying it's a Verizon commercial. Come on, wake up. If you woke up with breath in your lungs today, you, you still have a new beginning. Think about that. If we're not doing those things, this is a great opportunity, a reminder, I I should be doing those things. I should be growing in the knowledge of the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible, that's right out of the scripture. And you should be witnessing wherever we go and sharing the gospel. Because why? There's only two things that are going to last forever. The souls of men and the word of God. If we're not spending the time in those two things, then what's the use here? Amen? If we're not focused on those things, if we're not striving for those things, hear me out. The Lord can take us out. And I don't want the Lord to take any of you out. I don't want them to, you, 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 him to remove the lampstand from here. So my, my desire, my prayer is that you focus on those two things. So why? Where? 
Pick a place, anywhere. Spend, take a moment and spend some time with the Word of God every day. Whenever you get up in the morning, you go to bed at night, the Bible says. Always be studying the Word of God. If you're going to grow in your walk with Jesus, if you're going to grow, go if you're going to go deeper with God and really have the relationship that he wants you to have, you're going to have to carve out some time from your busy schedules when you and he can meet throughout the pages of the book of the, uh, in prayer. So how are we supposed to study the Bible? We're going to close with this point. We're supposed to study it cleanly. We're supposed to study it continuously. We're supposed to study it continuously and consistently. Supposed to study it carefully. And lastly, we're supposed to study it creatively. Those are the five ways we should study the Bible. Let me repeat those so everyone gets them. Cleanly, there's no errors in the Bible. Study it cleanly. Make sure you're understanding what it says. If you don't understand what it says, get a commentary. Get, get a, a, a dictionary. Look at the look at the, uh, the the original language. Study continuously every day, verse by verse, book by book. Book. Study consistently, daily basis. Think about a a a missed opportunity when you don't read the Word of God. A missed opportunity to spend time with, with Christ. Whenever I. Miss a, miss a day or whatever, I feel guilty because I missed the opportunity to be, to, to be with him. You wouldn't miss the opportunity to be with your best girl or your, or your best guy. Study it carefully. Study it creatively. You've got to get your Bible into you through memorization and through meditation. We're going to stop there for right now. That's uh, two lessons we uh, looked, reviewed. Uh, that, that lesson for um, having a new beginning with the Bible, that was like a three-week message. So that, that took a lot of time to go through. Um, next week, we're going to look at a new beginning in prayer, a new beginning in service, and a new beginning in witnessing. Those are the three other ones we're going to review next week. Next Sunday, and then the following Sunday, we're going to start off with a, a new beginning in giving. That's our next message. I never preached yet. I haven't preached yet. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to give me a holler uh, afterwards. Let's close in prayer and then have the guys come forward and sing our last hymn. Let's, let's close. Father, we're so grateful for this time you gave to us, this, Lord, this, to be in your house this morning. And Father, as we re- review these two important subjects to have a new beginning with God, a new beginning with your Bible. In your Bible, Lord, I just pray that these will hit home, bring back some memories uh, from our, our previous uh, messages, Lord. And for, Father, I just pray as we go forward, we ask that your blessing be a, uh, upon us. And for, Lord, I just pray that you would um, continue to guide and direct throughout this uh, next several weeks. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's turn to our stand. We'll sing our last hymn. 426, blessed be the tie, verse 1 and 3.
Thank you, Lord, for this uh, opportunity to be here. We ask that you bless each one as they partake, uh, given proudly mercies in Christ's name we pray. God's people said, Amen. 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 You're blessed and highly, highly favored. favored.